What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode, um, I have to be a thousand percent honest here. I hope when this this storyline is all said and done, I honestly hope Franco sues the draws off the PCPD. I hope so. This is a multi-million dollar lawsuit he could be looking at here. I mean, he could win millions off of this. I'm just saying, like, once he's exonerated of this, he can win a fortune. Because now all of a sudden, Lulu goes under hypnosis. I really would like to know, how the hell does Ryan have the power to put anybody under hypnosis when he's not even a psychiatrist? He's more, wasn't he? I think he was like a uh, pediatrician or something, some mess like that. A dentist. He was something. Think a pediatrician. How can you put anybody under hypnosis? How would you even know how to? Well, it's not that difficult. You could research it. Um, but this is so ridiculous. I'm like, so now Lulu goes under hypnosis. And he's basically taking her back to that night of the book launch when she was in her office. And she remembers Franco. I have to be honest though, I find it totally ridiculous. So <laughs> so she remembers Franco was at the door. This is so lud ABC. Y'all need new writers. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think it's time for a new for a new direction of this show. <laughs> I think it's time. I, I I I can't lie. I think it's time for a new executive producer. I think it's time for new head writers. Um, I mean, I'm trying really really hard to suspend disbelief on this show. I, I'm I'm trying. But it's like, how can you ignore these things? It's like, how? You know, I could see letting small things slide. But all of a sudden, she remembers Franco. Mind you, Lulu has had little to no interaction with Franco. Literally no interactions with this man. And yet you remember him being at your door that day, that night that you were stabbed. <clears throat> I, I can't ignore things like that. Then the PCPD is investigating Franco with literally zero evidence. None. Why don't they, if they were smart, which we all know they're not, why not check the, the surveillance footage? You found a bloody shoe print at the scene of the crime where Lulu was stabbed. Why don't you ask Franco to look at his shoes? They never asked Franco to see his shoes, the bottom of his shoes. You would see that the sizes more than likely don't match. The footprints, they don't they don't match. The size would not match. That automatically would eliminate him as a suspect. See, it's little shit like that that you just can't ignore. Like it's little facts like that that makes it hard to suspend disbelief. Because it's like if you're gonna do a police investigation, I can understand. You know, not doing it the way real police would do it to the T. I get it. But you have to make it a little believable. You know what I mean? Like you found footprints. Why have you not checked anybody's shoes? I believe they checked Peter's, I think. Peter's, they did check his shoes. And that's how they, you know, part of the reason they kicked him was because his shoes did not match. I don't think. I don't remember if they did or if they didn't. I don't think they did. But they do have proof that he was not at Lulu's office. They had the surveillance footage that showed him at the book launch. So why not check Franco's shoes? He had an alibi. He They also checked Franco's alibi and proved he did have an alibi. But they're still not, they don't care that he had an alibi. They still like him for these murders and this stabbing, which I find totally ridiculous. This is grounds for a lawsuit. Grounds for a major lawsuit. Because you already know once she tells the Jordan, oh, it was Franco that did it. They're going to go with a search warrant and probably try to arrest Franco. That's wrongful arrest right there. Plus harassment because they kept investigating knowing that he had an alibi and they still kept investigating him. 
with no evidence. So he definitely has grounds for a lawsuit. Um, I just find it totally stupid that she all of a sudden remembers Franco being at her office. I'm like, since when? You you haven't ran across Franco in God knows how long. So now all of a sudden Franco pops into your mind. Of course, Ryan is loving this, of course, because now he can frame Franco. So this works to his advantage. This is all going according to his plans. Um, this is just totally stupid to me. I'm like, I'm trying to suspend dif- disbelief on this, but it's, it's getting harder by the day with the stupidity. I'm just saying. It was so funny how when Jason told Carly that Sam was breaking up with him, Carly saw red. Did you see the look on Carly's face? Carly was ready to beat the hell out of Sam. <laughs> she really was. Carly was ready to stomp Sam until Jason told her that it was all a setup to get Shiloh. Um, so he was basically bringing her up to speed about the whole Shiloh situation. And Carly felt Christina, could she be in danger? Of course she's in danger. But Christina's too stupid to realize. It. Um, Carly just got too much time on her hand. Like she's just being a by business. All up in a by relationship. I'm like, Carly, sit down. I understand Jason is her bestie or whatever, but still, you you too invested in that relationship. Like, you just need to chillax. Um, of course, Jason's spidey senses were tingling when Obrecht came in there and she mentioned Nell and stuff like that. And you know how Jason is. Jason can spot some BS from a mile away. So he was wondering how the hell Obrecht would know Nell. Um, so of course that might lead into finally, hopefully ending this baby storyline, hopefully. Um, I can't wait for that to end. Every time I see Brad, it's like, I just want to beat the hell out of him. (laughs) You know, every time you see Brad, you just want to choke him. I'm like, that's just how I feel. Every time I see Brad, I just want to, I just want to put paws on him. Um, I did like the scene, though, when Aiden was skating and stuff like that. Franco and Liz took him skating, ice skating. What irritates me is they still think this boy could be gay. I'm like, based off of what? The fact that he likes to ice skate, he likes to cook and bake and so? <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't necessarily scream you're gay. I'm like, I don't get why they keep thinking it. Because that look that they gave each other, Franco and Liz gave each other when Aiden said that he wished he had a little brother or sister. They just gave each other a look like, oh, that's another piece of evidence that he's gay. I'm like, that's not evidence at all. I'm like, a lot of kids want a little brother or sister. If you're the baby of the family, you're the youngest. Of course, you want somebody smaller than you. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of times you do. Not saying all people want little brothers or sisters, but a lot of times some people do. Some kids do um, when they're the baby of the family. So I'm like, I don't see why that would be considered suspicious, but okay. (laughs) it's just it's dumb it's like why do y'all keep thinking this every little thing he says or does y'all just gonna keep thinking it i'm like okay um lucas need i swear i cannot wait for this whole thing to come out i cannot wait for lucas to ditch brad and throw him out like yesterday's garbage i can't wait um i could definitely see once this all comes out i could definitely see lucas Calling Alexis, maybe Alexis, and getting a jump on this divorce, which needs to happen. And the day that happens, I may have my champagne ready. Um, I don't drink, so it might be something different. Non-alcoholic, maybe. Um, But I just can't wait for this to happen because the storyline is just dragging and dragging. And I'm like, can we just get Michael, his kid, back, please? Like, seriously? So anyway, moving on from that mess. Um... Obrecht officially has a temporary job at the Invader. I say temporary because it's on a trial basis. Peter was, you know, of course, reluctant to give her a job. I can listen. I get both sides. Of the, I get both sides of the argument here. Peter feels like he shouldn't have to hire her because she tormented him. She tortured him. I get that. But I also get Obrecht's beef against him for Nathan's death because she still blames him for her son's demise, which I I could understand that, you know, even though he's not totally 1000 percent responsible for that. But I get it. Um, 
in my opinion, neither one owe each other anything, to be honest. They really don't. But I think Obrecht is starting to notice that Maxie kind of does have Peter wrapped around her finger. And she may use that to her advantage in the future. Maybe. I could see her trying to because you know how Obrecht gets down. She uses everything to her advantage. I mean, who wouldn't? When you have big gossip or tea on somebody, of course, you're going to eventually use it. You know what I'm saying? What good is knowing things if you're not going to use it to your advantage? What's the point? Especially when you have no allegiance to certain people. You know what I'm saying? Like you have no loyalties to certain people. So why not use it to your advantage? I probably would if I was on this show. If I was a character on the show, I definitely would. Even if I was playing a good person, I still probably would. You know what I'm saying? Because it might come in handy um, when you need it. Um, Massey and Peter, like I said, them two getting together. I don't blame Obrecht. Obrecht was like, please tell me you're not getting with him. <laughs> Obrecht was not here for it. I can't say that I blame her. Um, Valentine is still a snake in the grass. Honestly, I really don't care. I feel like Nina's getting exactly what she deserves at this point because I was rooting for Nina, but now it's like you you just continuously keep letting this man play you, so it's on you at this point. Um, you just keep letting this dude dog you, so at the end of the day, bye wow. Um... You're just setting yourself up for failure every time you're with Valentine. You know what I mean? Setting yourself up for major failure. Sasha is playing this game, and she's going to lose. Sasha, I, I really don't know what's going to happen with her. I don't know if they're going to kill her. <laughs> like, I, I just, I, I have a feeling Nina is definitely going to lash out at her when the truth comes out. Valentine, ain't no telling what she's going to do to him. She might spike his tea or coffee or something. You never know. Um... They're just trying to figure out how to keep the rules going, how to keep this lie going. You know what I'm saying? Because Valentine, no, it's a matter of time before the truth comes out. Like At this point, I don't know how you think you're going to keep this secret because it's like a boiling pot at this moment. It's going to erupt. It's going to flow over. At some point, somebody's going to open up their mouth. You know what I'm saying? You never know. Peter might find out about it. Um, you just never know. Like anybody can find out, and you never know if Obrecht's going to keep her mouth shut for too much longer. Like you just really don't know. Like anybody can find out anything, and your whole secret is out there. You know what I mean? But like I said, Nina's just dumb. You know what I mean? Like this man done showed you that he's nothing but a compulsive liar, and you still go back to him. So it, whatever happens is on you. Um. Anyway, that was pretty much the episode. Um. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Peace.